Try and fail, I tried and fail, no. How I tried and how I failed. Well, good morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion, coming to you live from Lisbon, Portugal, and today is our first full day of getting to go out and explore the city, so let's do this. The first stop that I want to make is actually in the neighborhood, right here in Belém. I'm going to show you one of the coolest statues I think I've ever seen. I actually saw it from across the park last night, but it's a pretty big deal here in Lisbon, so let's go. Now, that's not the statue. That's an amazing-looking gazebo, but we're going to go see the statue now. Well, you can see the ferry starting to come in, which is pretty appropriate because where we're going now is that big thing right there. So they just basically forklifted this boat all the way along this little track here on the side, and now they're going to drop it into the water. Well, you've noticed here probably that it's kind of on its own little island here. And you can see right directly in front of us is that big sword. But that's not the highlight of this monument. You see, this is called the Monument to the Discoveries. And it was originally thought up in 1939. It was part of the Portuguese World Expo. And they liked the idea so much that they decided they wanted to keep it. The problem was they hadn't made a permanent concrete foundation underneath it, and so it would never last. So they ended up having to tear it down, but the people missed it so much that they voted to have it reconstructed, except even better, and that it would last as long as possible. Now, at the very front was the king, and then following him back, this was basically supposed to be a romantic, idealized version of heroism. You had the king, then you had some of his warriors, you had the poets, you had the great thinkers behind him following behind. Isn't that amazing? Now it's probably good they didn't have this any time before that because Lisbon suffered a pretty bad series of natural disasters in 1755 that caused them to pretty much recreate a lot of this town, a lot of this city. Now I want to bring us over to the other side because the reason that they put this here and the reason I wanted to come show you is because the th idea behind it was right here at this port is where all of the discoveries would have set sail from. Magellan, Vasco da Gama. So they thought, hey, let's memorialize it right here. So even though the 1939 version was torn apart and destroyed, by 1960 they had this back and ready to go for everyone to visit. Now let's take a look and see what they put right here in the dead center. Why, it's a map of the world, of course. There's the U.S., South America. And there we are. Now I'm thinking tonight I might come back to this restaurant on the water. Well, that's cool. It almost looks like a work of art, but it has seats inside. Looks like a bird. I'm not sure what the story is on that guy. Very cool though, I love it. Cool lighthouse, huh? <laughs> now I'm actually heading that way because I want to see the Bellum Tower. It's right in front of us. I don't know if we're going to go to that while we're here or not, but we did make it to the tower. Even though I'll be in the country for a while, I'm actually moving around the country a lot. Every couple days I'm going somewhere else, so that's why I don't know exactly what I'll get to do. Well, there it is. Probably as close as we'll get to it. Bellum Tower, also known as the Tower of St. Vincent. Now, as you can imagine, most of the towers that we've seen on any of our journeys have all been for one reason, and it wasn't decoration. 
They always put these right at the, I guess you'd say the most heavily trafficked part of the river, and this was their defense system. The king had this built and it's a fortified fortress here. It's been here for a long, long time. And that, you see my friends, is the line to get in. So I don't think we're gonna make it in today. We have a lot of stuff to see. And I don't know that we can uh, squeeze a full tour of this tower in today. But wow, what a beauty, huh? Now you can tell it's a popular spot because people love to come and hang out right here on the beach and take their pictures. Now this tower has actually been here since 1514 and it's now UNESCO World Heritage Site. All right, time to move on. I actually passed two things along the way here, three things actually, that I want to show you guys. Well, since I ended up right beside it, I had to show you guys the Museum of Combat. Probably won't be able to go in. Like I said, I just don't have the, the time to go in and do full tours sometimes. But the grounds are amazing. 100 years of aviation, it looks like, for Portugal, 1909 to 2009. This is what I had to show you. This is for all the fallen soldiers, the memorial. Isn't that amazing? And obviously this is commemorating their 1909 entrance into aviation. I love it. You know somebody from Dayton, Ohio is gonna love seeing this. Is that a Messerschmitt? We even have a couple of pilots in there. Here you can see the route from Lisbon all the way down to South America. So as I was reading the little placard over there, it says this was actually in celebration of the 1917 flight from Lisbon to Rio. So it wasn't the 1909, that was when they entered aviation into the military, but this was actually a pretty good flight. And they made it. Actually, let's go in here and have some lunch. All right, time to eat. I know, I decided on pizza. I didn't want to risk it today. All right, lunch was good. For some reason, every time I travel, I don't have much of an appetite, so I only eat about half that food. What beautiful grounds, huh? Gotta love it. Now where we're headed to is actually right over here. Well, here you can see another monstrous line. Now what's interesting about this place is that in 1497, Vasco da Gama brought his men here. They spent the night in this monastery and prayed all night for their journeys where they took their famed expedition from Portugal around Africa to India, discovered the trade route to India. Magnificent, huh? Great architecture. Even though this church took 100 years to be built and it was pretty much built right after Vasco da Gama left here, there was a church that had already been here before on this site and it was in disrepair. But before they took their journey, it had been christened the monastery that was going to be here and they decided that the church that was here, even though it was in disrepair, was in good enough shape for Vasco da Gama and his men to sleep here the night before. So. That's the weird time frame to this property.
Now this is actually the tomb of one of the most famous Portuguese poets of all time. And that's kind of what this monastery was put here for when they decided to create it on the grounds of the old church. The reason that they had such an urgency is because they wanted this to be a kind of a burial ground for royal family and you know, I guess important people of the days. What a beautiful church though, right? There's actually a few people buried here, although I'm sh pretty sure Vasco da Gama is not here. You notice how these seats are all kind of situated in a circle? And of course, here's the altar. Thank you, wide angle lens. And you can see at the top of this one, there's a king's crown. Now right above this, you'll see the name Restello on here. Originally, the church that was on this site when Vasco da Gama spent the night here with his men, it was called the Hermitage of Restello. So that's the connection. But like I said, it had already been christened to be the monastery that it is now they'd already done like basically like a groundbreaking of it and they just built this on top of the old church site I'm gonna have to see if I can figure out how to get onto that balcony up there well I guess I was totally wrong they do have Vasco da Gama buried in here I was kind of surprised by that because when I was looking and I asked somebody outside, I was like, this is where Vasco da Gama is buried, right? And they said no. I was kind of surprised because I was thinking, why would you have him buried inside somewhere else when he departed from here? So as I was walking around, I noticed on the other side of the chapel is Vasco da Gama right here. Here's the little wall piece. Now this is interesting. This section has four of the Passion of the Christ paintings inside of it. And then right in there is a figure of Jesus Christ. Wow, that was pretty cool. I love going into churches, especially as old as that. I mean, that one's been around since the late 1500s, so pretty cool to get to see that and get to see Vasco da Gama's grave. Beautiful horse. There you can see our April 25th bridge out there in the distance. Our uh, Lisbon Bay Bridge, basically. Well, as you can probably tell, I decided to try and make it over to the uh, the big Jesus Christ. And it's taking me, it's gonna take me three buses to get there. So I'm one down, two more to go. Not exactly sure why Vodafone has a gigantic guitar here, but but it looks good. It does look good. All seem to come together. Happy now, happy now. Now, thanks for the failure. 
Well, we made it to the other side of the river, and wow, doesn't that look old? Look at all the art inside that wall over there. But you can tell here that they're having some sort of festival gathering here, or they, they normally do. You can tell by all the colors, and they've got a statue here to Ferneo Mendez Pinto. And we are going to be heading that way. See, I love the buildings here. Green, pink, blue, gotta love it. Now I think to get up to the statue we have to take this. We've got some abandoned property here. There you can see it right straight ahead. And Snow White's garden over here. Great job. See, look how beautiful the character is here. Just in the streets and the alleys. It's beautiful. Like this, look at this giant mural, this big mosaic right here along the path up there. And I guess we're close. Look at the art on this uh, garage door here. This is brilliant advertising by this restaurant, I'll tell you that much. Wow, check this out, this is right in front of it. I can't tell if that blood is supposed to be there or if that's if that's been uh, graffitied. Really can't tell. Well, it's amazing, and we're going to use this to enter. Sanctuary of Christ the King. Now, the whole story on this is basically that they did this as a, an honor not only to having Jesus Christ with his arms open towards Lisbon, which is where he's facing, but it was also kind of a, a thank you for being spared in World War II. Well, it is very beautiful up here, I will say that. Just to come up here for a walk around is pretty magnificent. A little bit of a hiking trail that goes back through there, through those palm trees. Look at that big cross. Unfortunately, I think I got here a little bit too late to be able to go up to the top, which is pretty much A-OK -okay with me. My fear of heights has just gotten completely out of control over the last couple of years, and just even small heights really annoys me. There he is. Made of cement, I'm telling you. You look at things like this, and I, I sit there and think to myself, where did the ingenuity of man come from that can make things this big made out of cement that could stand and not fall over or just putting it together? I mean, I just it blows my mind. Switch lenses and take a good look at him, huh? All right, there he is, completely zoomed in as much as I can go. Amazing. I'm so glad I came up here to see this. This is the Sanctuary of Christ the King overlooking Lisbon. You can tell this is a very popular spot up here. A lot of people coming up here just to take that look at Lisbon. Well gang, I'm gonna call it a day. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and I really wanted to just thank everybody that's contributed to this channel to help us get here. People on Patreon, PayPal, people that buy shirts, thank you all for helping to make this trip possible. Hope you guys enjoyed today. Have a great night and goodbye. I was too drunk, I admit to stone I couldn't connect with the crowd I felt so low, no Try and fail, I tried and failed How I try and when I fail Then it all seemed to come to 
together Happy now, happy now Thankful for failure It all seems to come together Happy now, 